I gotta whistle till somebody comes on, till my Aunt Sue comes on. She's always first. First or second? I should be either whistling one of these chart songs that we're gonna play here in a little bit, or a Ronnie Henson song, because I've been with him all day, or a Barry Rowland or a Kyla Faye Rowland song, because uh, I had a meeting with Barry today. It had to do with Barry and Kyla and some other Rowlands, and whew, friends and neighbors, your old buddy Les has forevermore had himself a day all day long. <laughs> wow. Been working on radio promotion for some of my artists. Big hit song for the Williamsons and uh, Heart to Heart and, and uh, Tim Livingston, my producer friend. Well, I'm his producer friend. I'm his producer and he's my friend. And he's got a big hit. And uh, Old Time Preachers Quartet, they've got a big hit. And we've just been working on big hits. And God's been blessing that. And so we're thankful for that. And then uh, we were with uh, Ronnie, uh, Ronnie and Lisa Henson. My son is uh, mixing Ronnie's brand new record. And I played uh, one little keyboard pass on that record today. And uh, my son played upright on something today. Then I had a meeting with Ronnie and Lisa, which uh, we had to cut short, but we're going to get back at it again tomorrow when he comes back and... and uh, we're doing several things. My son doing the majority of it, of course, um, on this particular record with Ronnie. And uh, man, it's sounding great. Ronnie Henson, great, great singer. Great singer. Just a great singer. I'm just saying. And Lord knows he's a great writer. And then uh, some exciting news that we'll be announcing hopefully very, very soon uh, relative to uh, Barry Rowland and Deliverance, Kyla Rowland and Deliverance, and some more Rowlands and some big things and wow it has been a big day today <laughs> and my brain is mush but uh it's been good and god is good and we're thankful amen amen and amen we're gonna have a good show tonight um buy a hat go to oldtimepreachersquartet.com i sing myself happy go get your hat We'd appreciate it as we continue not to sing <laughs> like uh, a lot of others, although there's some singing going on. And we did sing last Saturday the first time in a, in a while. I think we've sung like three or four times since March, uh, Mar like since like the end of February or first week of March maybe. Um, but uh, some folks are getting back out and singing. As a matter of fact, that reminds me, if you're close to Fayetteville, Tennessee, Tomorrow night and Saturday night, ooh-wee, man, it's going to be big time out there at uh, Fayetteville at uh, Shadow Valley. Uh, I forgot who all is going to be there, but I'm going to be emceeing tomorrow night and Saturday night, so please come and visit with us. I know Mark Trammell Quartet's there one night, and Heaven's Mountain Band, and Jeff and Sherry Easter, and, and, there's a, and others, and I just can't remember them all, but yeah, it's going to be good. Can't wait. Tomorrow night and Saturday night, come out and be with us, okay? I think it starts at 6 o'clock, Shadow Valley, big outdoor, so you can social distance and all that. You don't have to shake anybody's hand. You can do the old elbow knock, and and um, so it's all good, social distance. Get away from everybody. won't have to wear a mask because you, you can stay away from everyone. It's just a big old uh, field, and you go under a bunch of trees, too, for... for uh, um, to shield, uh, you know, sun, sunlight, although it's going to start, sun's going to be going down, starting to go down then. So it's going to be great. Tomorrow night, Saturday night, come there, okay? Shadow Valley, looking forward to emceeing it. All right, here's what I need you to do. Jot down this number, 800-360-5051. 800-360-5051. Dave Thurston, I see you there. Jot down that number, 800 800- 360-5051. And after my show tonight, I want you to call and tell me who you think is going to be the favorite baritone in Southern gospel music. Favorite baritone. 
And here are the five nominees for the Singing News Fan Awards. Lauren Harris of the Kingdom Airs, Scotty Inman of Triumphant Quartet, Paul Lancaster Booth Brothers, Josh Singletary Tribute Quartet, Mark Trammell of the Mark Trammell Quartet. I want you to call 800-360-5051. Give me your name, tell me who you think will win, and tell me who you think they missed as a possibility for the favorite baritone. Do that, and I'll put you on my nationally syndicated show next week. Heard all across the country, Monday through Friday. I do morning drive in uh, West Virginia. I do afternoon drive in Florida, and I do middays. Good night in North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Indiana, Kentucky. And I'm just all over the country, everywhere. And you'll be on that show, 800-360-5051. Okay. Also, if you'd be so kind, last week uh, it was announced the Diamond Award nominees for 2020 from Scoops Magazine. And uh, I'm blessed to have a whole bunch of folks up for a whole bunch of awards. And it sure would um, please me if you would uh, go and vote for the folks that I work with because they are deserving. And I mean it. Great people. Uh, mixed Group of the Year, Williamson's Female Vocalist of the Year, Lisa Williamson's Song of the Year, Every Moment, Every Mountain, Every Mile, the Williamson's, golly, what a song. And uh, Lisa Williamson is the Songwriter of the Year. So go vote for the Williamson's in all those categories. New artist that uh, I signed just a few months ago, and I produced their record, and it is hot as a pistol. You hear it on XM and Light, and you hear it on radio everywhere. And uh, wow, uh, it's just happening for me. I'm so happy. I'm talking about Heart to Heart, and they are up for the Sunrise Trio of the Year and for the uh, Gospel Music Today Video DVD of the Year for Sons of Uncle Sam. Great video. What a great Fourth of July video. So go vote for them. And then in the bluegrass category, my goodness, bluegrass group uh, of the year, Heaven's Mountain Band, bluegrass female artist of the year, Deborah Johnson of Heaven's Mountain Band, uh, bluegrass gospel male artist of the year, Roger Johnson and Rodney Johnson of Heaven's Mountain Band, and song of the year for bluegrass, Heaven's Mountain Band's most requested prayer. My, my, my. Go vote for all my Heaven's Mountain Band friends. And then, uh, must be a slow year, uh, I'm nominated in two categories for the Paul Heil Award for Broadcasting and for the J.D. Sumner Living Legend Award, a.k.a. Less is Old. <laughs> but anyway, if you don't have anyone better in either of those categories and you want to vote for me, then have at it. Um, that'd be wonderful. Thank you. And let's see. Don't forget, too, in some, uh, some of the categories, I work with a whole bunch of folks outside of my label as an independent producer and radio promoter. I produce for Bama Blue Grace and the Barber Family. They're up for awards. I do radio promotion for Lizzie Long, Stevens Family Tradition, Primitive Quartet, Britton Family, Reagan Riddle of the Primitive Quartet, Brad and Donnie Stevens of Stevens Family Tradition, Ferguson Family. Work with all those folks. They're up for various awards as well. Go vote for uh, the folks that I work with. I sure would appreciate it. Now, here's one more thing. Christmas in the Smokies. Come on, camp meeting time. We're going to eat and sing. You like it so far? We're going to eat and preach. You like it so far? And then after we're through eating and singing and eating and preaching, guess what we're going to do? We're going to eat again. Right there. Going to be myself, Old Time Preachers Quartet, Barry Rowland and Deliverance, Sacred Harmony, Bob Seller, Sherry Taylor, Paul Bolin, Covenant, Chelsea Esty. Some of these folks you may not know, just trust me. They're great, incredible singers, like everybody you see on that page right there. And uh, as uh, here in the next month or two, we're going to see if we can't add even a few more to make it just a big old blowout of an event. But uh, go ahead and call for more information if you would, 865-278-3681, 865-278-3681. It's uh, 278-3681, okay? Okay, so there's all the stuff. Now it is time for Facebook Live with Less, Southern Gospel Music, Memorabilia, Memories, and Ministry. Last couple nights, we've been looking at the very first ever Southern Gospel Music Chart, the very first ever number one Southern Gospel Music Chart, January 1970, in the Singing News Magazine, and it was called the Hit Parade List. Hit Parade. And it was a chart. And we got all the way up to, through, uh, and up to number six last night in the top 20. I will quickly review the top 20. 
There was a two-way tie. After all, Jake Hess and the Florida boys uh, had that out. Number also tied for 20, Searching for Reality, Reba Rambo. Number 19, Bill Gaither Trio and the Downings had a version of I Believe What the Bible Says. Number 18, Guilty of Love, the Goodmans and the Florida Boys. Number 17, the Sunny Banks, Weatherfords and Inspirations. Number 16, Sweeter Gets the Journey, the Oak Ridge Boys. Number 15, Pity the Man, Goodmans, Thrasher Brothers, and the Hemp Hills. Number 14, Gospel Heaven, the Thrasher Brothers. Number 13, Fill My Cup, Lord, Blackwood Brothers, as well as the McDuff Brothers. Number 12, Night Before Easter, the Blackwood Brothers. Number 11, Cripple Boys Prayer, Steve Sanders. Number 10, This Is My Valley, also Steve Sanders, as well as the Rambos. And of course, Dottie Rambo wrote that song. Number nine, Jesus is a Soul Man. The Seagulls, as well as Lawrence Reynolds and the Oak Ridge Boys had that at number nine. Number eight, check this out. Daddy Sang Bass by the Stamps, the Oak Ridge Boys, Blackwood Brothers, Florida Boys. Four artists with the number eight song in the country. Number seven was Had It Not Been, that was the inspirations, the Crisp Family, the Goodmans, and the Rambos. Four artists again. And uh, number six was When Morning Sweeps the Eastern Sky, The Travelers, or The Happy Goodmans. And, of course, we played the Happy Goodmans version. Now, so that uh, leads us up to uh, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and I'm going to play, uh, well, I got, I think I've got four of the five here. We may be playing uh, more than I thought tonight. So let's just uh, start with number five, and it is a song that was recorded by the Blue Ridge Quartet as well as the Stamps, and I have chosen the Stamps Quartet version. Uh, so number five, January of 1970, over 50 years old. Are you believing this? Over 50 years. It's called I've Been Born Again. J.D. Sumner and the Stamps, number five, in January of 1970. Here you go. Won't find my chance here in this world of sin and shame. All I want to know is that I've been born again. And I don't want wealth or fame. I don't care who knows my name. All I want to know is that I've been born again. As I journey through this land, there's but one who understands all the troubles and the trials I go through. So I knelt there in the aisle and God met me with a smile. Now I know, I know that I've been born again. As I journey through this land, there's but one who understands all the troubles and the trials I go through. Yes, there's one. I've been born again, number five in January of 1970, over 50 years ago. Good night, 11. Wow. And uh, on the back, I, I showed you the album there of J.D. and the Stamps. And on the back, it's got a picture of uh, all the guys with their uh, families. And there's Tarzan. You say, what in the world? What's a Tarzan? Well, let me tell you what a Tarzan is. That right there is, uh, his name is Tony Brown. His nickname is Tarzan. And that guy right there? producer of all the George Strait hits in the world and a blue gazillion other country hits all over the place. Vince Gill, When I Call Your Name and all that. He is Mr. Nashville, nicknamed Tarzan, Tony Brown. 
And there you've got uh, Shirley, J.D., and Mary. This is uh, his wife and daughter, J.D., wife and daughter right there. And then, uh, let's see, we got <laughs> the Stamps Quartet 2000 A.D. I don't think that ever happened, but that was a, a cute little thought there right there. <laughs> let's see, Dave saying, who was singing lead on that particular tune by the Stamps? You know, I'm going to... Uh, um, it was Donnie. That was Donnie Sumner singing the lead. Had to think for just a second, but I'm certain that's who it was. It was Donnie Sumner. And uh, so there you go. So that was song number five uh, back in January of 1970. And uh, so let's go up a notch. I think we're going up a notch to number four. Yeah, I've got this. And boy, what an un unusual version uh, for song number four that's been recorded by everybody that has ever sung a Southern Gospel song. It was written by uh, Bill and Gloria Gaither, and everybody in the world has recorded it. But I want to tell you now, this, something's wrong with this thing here. Excuse me for a minute. <laughs> well, I have to deal with this later. I don't know what's going on. Well, here, there it is. Um, this particular version, their version of it was, uh, boy, it's, uh, it's different. And you'll see what I mean here in just a second. Bill and Gloria Gaither, this, is, uh, this was song number four. And it was also recorded by Ruby Kitchens and the Blue Ridge Quartet, and they all had it in at, uh, at number four. But we're going to listen to the, the, the real version, the Gaither version. I mean, they wrote it. This is their version. This is really their song. And even though everybody in the world has recorded it, oh boy. No recordings like this one of He Touched Me, Bill and Gloria Gaither, all the Gaither trio. Check them out here. Right there. Look at that. This is the end of another song here. That first song, this is song number two. The first song goes like for 39 minutes on this piece of vinyl. And uh, I'm just going to let the music trail out there. <laughs> but can you believe that, I mean, this is going back over 50 years for crying out loud. Time goes just like that. But number four, back in the day, right here. What an unusual version, I might have said that already, of He Touched Me. I was shackled by a
on that version of He Touched Me, which was the number four song in January of 1970. Wow. And I still say a very unusual version. Do you agree or am I on an island, am I on an island all on my own <laughs> when I say that? Wow. That was an unusual version. Our quartet does it, Old Time Preachers Quartet, and we do it, it's, got, it's not a, you know, it's me. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Let's go to song number three. And everybody and their brother recorded this one. Um, oh, this might be a different I'm Free. Hmm. I might get, be playing you the wrong song here. Because it's got the Bill Gaither trio, so it must be Bill's I'm Free. I don't think I've... Oh, hmm. i got to scratch my beard on that one for just a minute. Spear Family, Bill Gaither Trio, Downings, and the Goodmans. Well, it could be I'm free from the shackles. Da, da, da. I was thinking it was an abbreviated uh, title of Thank God I'm Free. Now, what am I to do? Because I haven't, uh, tr uh, haven't found the, uh, the I'm Free. Let me see if it happens to be on this particular Bill Gaither Trio record. If it is, then I'll just play their version of it. It is not. So I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to play what I brought here to, to uh, the table. And this may not be the song, <laughs> but it's the same year, so I'm a bit confused. I tell you what, we're going to make a call here in a minute and talk to somebody who's a part of the number one song for January of 1970. And maybe he can shed some light on this. But either way, whether this is the uh, number three song or not, you know what it is? I'll tell you what it is. It's a great song. We're going to play it anyway. Happy Goodman version of it. Thank God I'm free. I love it. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin.
Happy Goodman ending. Thank God I'm free. Now, I don't know if that was the number three song in January of 1970 or not. Now that I get to studying on it, it might have been the I'm free from the shackles that bind me to Bill Gaither. Uh, I'm free. Uh, we're going to make a call here in a minute, and that person very well may know. But uh, i tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to play. I have two versions of the number one song. Oh, by the way, the number two song, <clears throat> and I've got it for the life of me. I can't find it. i got to get more organized. But the number two song was the Statesman with Hovey singing, Thanks to Calvary, I don't live here anymore. That's a good song right there. That was number two. The number two song, January of 1970, the first ever Southern Gospel chart. Is that not incredible? Now, I'm getting ready to play you the uh, number one song. I've got, and it was recorded by the Oak Ridge Boys, the Inspirations, the Florida Boys, and the Downings. Four artists had the number one song in January of 1970. And I am going to play those young whippersnappers right there, the Inspirations. It was song number three on side number one. So they wasn't sure if they were going to send that out or if that was going to catch on or not because they always put the big number one song on there, you know. Um, what they thought was going to be the big hit is the first song on that album. Before I do that, I haven't talked to anybody that's on tonight. Let's just take a look here. There's my Aunt Sue. There's Gene Thorne. There's Patty Graham from Ohio. Dave Thurston all the way up from Michigan. Plum almost up into Canada. Andy Zare. Cindy, hey, I'm getting ready to uh, call you, Cindy, so hang on. Blake and Terry, Jamie Simmons, Don Powell from Kentucky, good to see you, sir. Jim, uh, and Jim Rolton, Jim uh, Plower, Plaffer, Plouffer, Plouffer, I can't, I don't know how to say your last name, Jim, I'm so sorry. And Jim Rowland from up in Pennsylvania. And uh, Vestal has a great operatic voice. She, that's what she wanted to do before uh, the Lord changed her mind, but she kept that operatic kind of sound even in her gospel music. What a voice. I agree with you, Aunt Sue. All right. Now, let's, let, me, let me try to find this. As you already know, anybody that watches me, my turntable's up over my head. <laughs> so I, I just have to like stab around until I find um, the uh, right song. So here we go. Oh. Yay! Number one.
inspirations right there. Jesus is coming soon. Hello. Is this Archie Watkins? And live in color. How you doing, my brother? I'm uh, doing good, doing good. How are you, Les? I'm a hanging in there like a hair in a biscuit. I'm trying to outrun this uh, this uh, coronavirus. Well, I'm staying away from it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we came home March the 15th, and, and uh, my wife and my two daughters just put the thumb on me. I mean, they put <laughs> the and said, now, Dad, you just might as well sit here on top of the hill and forget about it. And uh, I took them serious because uh, they were. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you've been doing it how long? 50 how many years? 56. You've never seen, you've never been off a stretch like this, have you ever? No, uh, no. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's, so, it's so unusual. I mean, I started singing when, when I was 15 years old. And for 56 years, you know, we've, We've been on the road, and and uh, we never, you know, we take maybe, you know, we have taken as much as three weeks off, and and in December for Christmas, but we never did, you know, just take off. And I mean, I come home March fifteenth, and you know, it's a different life for me just being at home. I mean, I, you know, uh, I, I I hate we've got the virus, and I hate. You know, I'm I'm so uh, I feel so sorry for the people who are touched by it. Yeah. And uh, you know, it, I think it's I think it's helped some things. I think it's helped people, families spend more time together, and yeah, people slow down and as the old saying goes, smell the roses. But uh, yeah, you know, it's it's been a totally different thing. I never dreamed. Anything like this would happen. If I was to have uh, you give the phone to Cindy, how would she say it's been having you at home for five consecutive months? What would she say? Now, tell me the truth, Archie. <laughs> uh, well, if, if, she, if she's not been lying to me, she's loving it. But, you know. <laughs> 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 uh, well, no, we, we've, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, I was just thinking. Uh, this is the way we've been for, I met her uh, in 1965, and uh, uh, we, we practiced singing at her house, and uh, that's a long story, one of the guys worked for her stepdad, and uh, we, uh, we started dating in 65. And uh, we 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 dated all through high school, and and she went to college one year, and and, and you're talking about Jesus coming soon. Uh, I remember when we got that album out. You know, uh, we were singing all the time and on the jubilee, and you know, just getting started good. And we we sat down. And we mailed out 500 of those albums yeah. to radio stations. Yeah, yeah. The, the entire album. You know, I, I heard you say about picking the, you know, the hit song off the album. And things. Right. We didn't know what that was. You yeah. Know? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know, we didn't know, you know, we didn't know, just know much about gospel music, you know. And uh, we were just trying to do something for the Lord and love to sing people in the mountains here. You know, that's the, the lifestyle. It's born in you to sing about yeah. everybody. Yeah, sure. And, yeah. Uh, and uh, so we we just mailed out 500 of those and and we started getting contacts, you know, about, about the song Jesus Come Soon. We sang it in churches and places where we go and it was just... Uh, you know, it was just really strong, uh, and uh, you know, we we it seemed like people just line up to buy an album because of Jesus coming soon. You know, and, and uh, I don't know if you remember uh, the radio station in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Oh yeah, W A C T. Yeah, sure. There was there was a man there named Jack Ham. 
Yeah. Yeah. He called. He called and said, uh, y'all, we, we hadn't been in that part of the country, you know. He said, y'all need to come down here and sing his song. He said, it's the hottest thing I've ever had on the radio. <laughs> we hadn't been, you know, we hadn't been around calling people and <laughs> asking them to request it. Or, you know, it wasn't one of them kind of things. We didn't have no promotion. We just sent the album out. Yeah. It just... It just lit up everything, you know, and, and uh, we, you know, that's that song was the biggest song we've ever had by far. Now, you know, on that same chart, because it's the very first ever chart in the singing news, Southern Gospel yeah. Music, it was called the Hit Parade. Uh, that was the name of the chart back then. Did you know or do you remember that the Inspirations also had another song in the top 20 at the same time? No, I don't remember it, but uh, if I was going to guess what it was, I'd guess on the Sunny Banks. Sir, you would be guessing correctly. That was another hit song of ours back then. It was number 17 the same time that this one was number one. Jesus is coming really? soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that something? Now, which one of the two was sent first? Wasn't it Sunny Banks? Yeah, we sang it. So we I thought. recorded it on our second album. Yeah, yeah. So I thought. So yeah, it was probably was coming Jesus. down. It was probably yeah. coming down as Jesus yeah. is coming soon went up. Yeah, it was. Yeah. J Jesus coming soon just blew everything out of the water. Yeah. I mean, Jesus coming soon, we recorded it and uh, we got it from the George Shelton family. Okay. And they were, they were fixing to make an album and we were real close to them. We sang a lot together. They were from Pekin, South Carolina, just off the mountain over here. And uh, we sang in a lot of churches and, you know, Saturday night singings and stuff. We sang together a lot. And uh, they were up up here, I, and I don't remember less how it happened, but they came by. We all met at Martin's house. And uh, they came by, and they were... We just spent the whole afternoon together, and they were singing some of the songs as getting to put, getting ready to put on an album. As a matter of fact, they was going the next, I believe, the next week to put it to do an album, with Mark Five, and we had already made some albums at Mark Five, and uh, they sang some of the songs, or I don't know, maybe sang all of them. And I remember now. This is what I remember: the they said, we've got another song, uh, which would have made 13 songs. And, you know, we just put 12 on that album. Right. And they said, we've got this one, and we're not sure if we're going to put it or in the place something else. And they sang, Jesus is coming soon. And uh, Jack Laws just went crazy over that song. And he said, we got to sing that song. Do y'all care if we sing it too? Why, no. People, you know, it didn't matter back then to us. We we didn't know that it was, you know, there was <laughs> there was some competition in it. We, we wasn't aware of that at that time, you know. You're aware of it now, aren't you? Yeah, oh, yes, sir. <laughs>
Yeah. They were all, I believe they were all heartwarming at that time. Yes, sir. I've got the album right here. I'm showing it to the folks right now. Yeah. Well, they were all heartwarming. And see, we were, we put a, a Mark V label on that, but that was not, they didn't own it, you know. That was our, our album, and the promotion that was done was just by us. And Heartwarming had a, you know, they were sending songs to radio stations and right. promoting them, and, you know, that uh, that was before Canaan right. picked you. us up. You yeah, know. yeah, yeah. And Canaan yeah. picked us up uh, a 71. You know, and this so is was, 70 you're talking about? Yes, uh, January of 1970, yeah. See, we recorded in 68. It had been that strong on the radio that long. Yeah, that used to happen. That used to happen oh, like that. A song would be on the oh, charts for two years. Oh, yeah, it, it stayed on. And, and and I remember, you know, I was listening to you uh, talking about Gaither. Yeah. And Gaither was, man, he was writing the songs and now that song that the statesman did uh thanks to calvary uh, thanks to calvary didn't bill right there he did yes sir yeah, yeah i yeah. thought he did yeah yeah he, he wrote a lot of good songs and uh we uh that song thank god i'm free uh we 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 worked with the goodmans about every weekend you know yeah yeah in 1972 or 73 we did a a year tour with us and the Goodmans. Yeah. Called, called it the Battle of Songs. We sang every Friday and Saturday night together, just us. Man, I yeah. I refer I I refer to those days as the good old days. Boy, they were. Yeah. They were. Hey, they I've got the, I've got this album up here. Give me the ages of everybody. I'm pointing at Ronnie Hutchins right now. How old was Ronnie? Well, now let me let me just. Okay. I don't know what that is. Me and Ronnie was born in 49, so he and I were 19. Okay, so you and Ronnie were 19. How about the bear hunter? He was, he is three years older than me, so he is 22. How about Troy? Troy was three years younger than me, so he was 16. Good night of living. Uh, he was 12 years older than me, so he was 30. And he was your all's uh, high school teacher? Well, uh, some of uh, he didn't teach Troy. And uh, Well, nobody can teach Troy. That's a story for well, another day. But anyway, Tammy, go ahead. Tammy, Tammy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so, so when this was recorded, you're talking about that was our age. Yeah, yeah. The picture, you just talked about the picture on the front. Wow, that's amazing, yeah. boy. So young. Yeah. yeah. That was, uh, and I'll tell you what, Liz, uh, that was all God's doing. I believe I that. Mean, that. It was totally God's doing. There was no, you know, there was nobody uh, even knew what was going on, hardly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We sang here in the mountains. People sang. My uncle had a quartet called the Smoky Mountain Quartet. And see, Jack was my first cousin, and Troy is my fourth cousin. We were raised together in church, you know, on the same, we say, from the same creek, Lands Creek. Yeah. And uh, uh, we, we just grew up together, and my uncle had a quartet. Mine and Jack's uncle, his name was Walter Laws, and uh, he sang, they all sang out of the Stamps Baxter books. You yeah, know? sure. And we had a singing here every second Saturday night. At a, at a, you know, they moved it from different churches, you know. And the Smoky Mountain Quartet sang, and Jack's family sang some, and Troy and his mom and daddy sang a little, you know, people, everybody saw, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it was, it's one of them things where uh, my uncle and Martin had become good friends. And my uncle and Martin and Jack were supposed to meet at Martin's house. And I was going to spend the night with Jack, and I went with him. <laughs> and my uncle didn't show up, so me and Martin and Jack and a man named Dean Robinson. 
us. Met the four of us. Wow. And we started singing because that's what that was pleasure, you know. And, yeah, yeah. And that's what mountain people did. Yes, mountain sir. People love to sing. Yeah. And uh, so we started singing, and we just kept, you know, kept going back, kept going back, and Martin was singing lead. And then, really, uh, I never yeah, knew that. For about six weeks. And then... Uh, well, I'll uh, be. Then we got a guy, Martin didn't want to sing. He said he couldn't sing. And uh, and he couldn't, really. <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> I mean, he was, he was excellent on the piano because he could play in any key. And he played good rhythm. Yes, he did. Great. And, Maybe and, about the best rhythm piano player we've ever had in our industry. I, I've said that before. Now, yeah. He can't Yeah. It started, you know, and then as we'd sing it, he'd try to make it get faster. Uh, but I think he was just doing that from excitement, maybe, or, but, but until he started doing that, that <laughs> there's never been a better rhythm player than very, Martin. Very true. You know something. You know something that uh, we'll we'll end with this. Uh, well, a, a, a couple of things. Something that caught me after I just played that a while ago was how slow you all did it originally. I can't tell you why. Uh, seemed like that's the way the Shelton family did it. Okay. You know, seemed like they did it about that rhythm, and we kept it that rhythm for a long, long time. But as you know, as the, the excitement came in the song from the crowd, you know, we just kept speeding up a little, speeding up a little. And, uh, you know, it, it just got, it, it, it got too fast for a while there. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's, uh, it was started, it was recorded intentionally that way. It yeah. was sung it that way for a long time. Yeah. Well, I just forgot that that cut was so slow because I'm so used to you all just bearing down, man, going 100 yeah. miles an hour with it. Yeah. But uh, yeah. sure enough, the hit the hit version was was slow for you all. Okay, so here's the last thing, and then I'm gonna, then I'm I'm going to let you go, and I got to go on to a couple other things here. I always have at the uh, at the end of the show. It's uh, typically it's me, but if I have a guest on, I, I normally let them take a minute or two and give a little ministry moment. Just kind of speak from the heart, uh, and, and I'd like for you to do that as it relates to Jesus is coming soon. You know, that's a song that was a hit song over 50 years ago. You recorded it 52 years ago, and yeah. he was coming soon then. So what does that make that today? Uh, well, it, it is the fulfilling. You know, it's everything, everything's happened that's supposed to happen. You know, we, we when we start saying Jesus is coming soon, you know, there was a promise that he's coming back. Yeah. But now, nothing else has to happen for yeah. him to return. Yeah. And I'm I'm glad I know him. I'm glad I started singing for him. It's a it's a calling. It's not it's not like being called to preach, but uh, it's a calling, and it's a calling on my life. And I I'm glad I chose to sing for him. And uh, he has blessed me, and uh, you know we've sung "Jesus Coming Soon." When uh, I remember one time we on, we had to encore it six times, <laughs> and we were and we were trying to stop, you know. <laughs> and, and, and it's been, you know, that was then, and it's still true today. You know, yeah. I think I think things that are happening, God's getting everybody's attention. Yeah. All over the world. Yes, sir. And and uh, and I know he's coming, and I'm looking for him. Me too, Archie. Thank you, brother, for uh, taking some time with me tonight. I, I had a good time. I hope you did too. Les, I appreciate you being our friend. Okay. Likewise, brother. Thank you. Thank you, and God bless you. God bless you, Archie. Bye bye. Bye bye. Archie Watkins, the one and only of the Inspirations, and we played their version of the number one song, can you believe it, number one, January of 1970, over 50 years ago. 
And uh, there were four groups that had it as number one, which included uh, the Florida Boys and the Downings and the Oak Ridge Boys. Now, I've been doing this for 42 years, and I've, I've gotten involved with many, 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 many conversations uh, over Jesus is coming soon, and the best cut, and the best version, and the best this, that, and the other, and I'm not going to go, I'm not weighing in on it. I like them all. But I have the Oak Ridge Boys cut here, and I'm going to play it. And I want you all to kind of just jump in there. And there's and there's nothing, I mean, there's no winner or loser here. I'm just curious which of those two you might like the best. And I tell you, what's amazing to me, though, on the Inspirations cut, that thing was the number one song by a bunch of teenagers. Do you hear me? A bunch of teenagers just getting started. So by default, I think that wins. <laughs> But but I'm gonna play the Oak Ridge Boys version and then we're gonna call tonight. But uh, and it's from their live. I'll show you here in a minute. Let me try to find it here. Again, my turntable's up over my head, so who knows? Uh, let me see how close I can get to it here. Let me just let me just try. I hope I can get close. Let me see what I got here. I'm gonna get close. Here we go. Let's try this. <laughs> Now, these are grown men, don't forget. Our troubles will soon be happy forevermore. When we meet on that joy, free from all care. Rising up in the sky, telling this world goodbye. Home we then shall fly. just did a little uh, little version of it on their live record there. I just want, wanted to give you a little taste of that. So there's the Oak Ridge Boys version of Jesus is Coming Soon from their uh, performance album. This was live, I think, at the like Municipal, where was it? It was in Nashville somewhere. Was it? Yeah, War Memorial. Uh, so there you go. So uh, there you go. The number one song, January of 1970, the first ever chart in Southern Gospel Music in the singing news. Back then they called it the first hit parade list. The Hit Parade List. The Hit Parade List. That was the name of the chart. So what'd you think of the show tonight? Did you enjoy Archie? I enjoyed talking to Archie. It was good. What about that group of teenagers having a number one song on the uh, first chart ever in Southern Gospel Music? What a story. What a story. And then he tells me that Ronnie Hutchins writes the words out for Dwayne Allen, whom we just heard from the Oak Ridge Boys, for them to sing the song. And I found out that Martin Cook was the lead singer of the Inspirations for the first six weeks. Man, what a night. <laughs> this has been great. I don't know if y'all have enjoyed it. Your old buddy Les has enjoyed tonight. Let's see who else is with us here. Let's see here. Uh, there's Blake and there's Terry Willits. And there's uh, Jamie and Don and Jim and Patty and Jim and uh, let's Steve Black. The Shelton's introduced Jesus is coming soon to gospel music. What about that, Terry Willits? I believe that's what we just heard there from Brother Archie. Call George Jr. Shelton. I'm sure he would say that. <laughs> Brian Rothel, good to see you. I either have audio or video, not both. Cool, Terry, that's cool. Big Mo, what about it? Nancy Truett, Greg Davis, Garen Gillespie. Roland Kesterson, speaking of the inspirations lead singer for the Inspirations for more than six weeks, I might add. There's Mike Keller. Roland says, love my boss. Archie being his boss, of course. His favorite words are, you know, and he didn't beat me arm wrestling regardless of what he says. I'll believe it when I see it, Roland. I think he can take you. Hello, Carol Cassetta. Hello, Donnie Cox. Hello, Terry Carter. John Briggs, Ken Williams says hello to Archie. Oh, there's old Tim Owens. Tenor singer for the old Harry legged Preacher Boys Quartet. Ken Williams, I love you guys and always will. Great sound and great group, always. 
the inspiration. Yes, sir. Ken Williams, radio favorites on my station. Play y'all on every program I do on the radio. Right on. So enjoyed Archie, one of the best ever. Thank you, Chuck. I hope you enjoyed that. And won't you, uh, why don't you, um, everybody hit, uh, what do you, what's that word? What do you do? Forward or something or share? Share. His share. <laughs> so uh, everybody can hear our uh, interview with Archie. Dave Thurston, uh, oh, talking to Terry Willits there. Album cover, dressed like Western singers. Oh, I want to read this. What is this? Scars around their neck. <laughs> Ken Williams, love Archie Watkins. Big Mo, love that interview. Thank you, Big Mo. Appreciate that. Toss up between inspirations and Oak Ridge boys. I understand. I'm with you on that. I agree with that. Terry Willits, Dave Thurston, trying to remember the picture from memory. Dave Rowland sang baritone and Ed Enoch lead. Uh, I remember Dave doing lead on I Know. Okay. Gene Thorne went to Tup Tup Tupelo, Mississippi, and watched them and when they just started as teenage boys. Terry Willis, great Archie interview. Randy Griffiths, good to see you. Chuck, Terry, Ken, thank you all so much. God bless you all. We appreciate it. Now, tomorrow night and Saturday night, Facebook Live with Les will be coming at you live from Shadow Valley in Fayetteville, Tennessee, where there's the big Fayetteville, Shadow Valley, Gospel shindig hold down barbecue and uh shindig dance and i'm emceeing it and it's got folks like jeff and sherry easter and mark trammell quartet and i forgot all who all is going to be heaven's mountain band and a bunch of others and so it is going to be a great night so if you can get to fayetteville tennessee tomorrow night six o'clock saturday six i'm telling you it's out in a big field you can social distance you can stay 60 feet from people, away from people if you want. Don't have to shake anybody's hands. Uh, you don't have to wear a mask. It's out in the open. Man, I'm telling you, you need to come and get out of the house for once in five months and just have a big time with us at Shadow Valley. Come on. Come on. I think I'm done for the night. Facebook Live with Les, Southern Gospel Music, Memorabilia, Memories, and Ministry. Coming at you live. Shadow Valley. Tomorrow night, Saturday night, Lord willing, God bless you. See you later.